Hello, this is Rick Patterson with the Handyman Toolbox. Welcome to my video today. Well, uh, we've done a lot of uh, work here at this house, and I'm at a client's house, and I have decided uh, to do a couple of little extra things here in this, in this job. Uh, usually I do them individually, but we're doing about three projects in this one big job. So. Uh, today I've got a step here right behind me that is broken. I'm going to show you a picture of it real quick and uh, we're going to go ahead and tear that tread up and then replace it. Okay, so as you can see here, this tread um, is broken, and uh, there's a couple of telltale signs of why this has happened. One is that um, it's not maintained that well. The uh, the uh, and what I mean by maintained that well, uh, anything that you have outside needs to be, uh, of course, the wood needs to be pressure treated. Number one, which this is. Number two is that uh, it needs a fresh coat of paint on here to preserve it. Now, water will come down on top and oftentimes uh, penetrate uh, little crevices. And then through the years, wood rot will set in. Let me just break this up a little bit. I'll show you if I can. Let's see, you see how uh, dark that is underneath there? And uh, that's a sign there's mold there that's already cracked all the way through. And so sometimes this happens just with going up and down uh, the stairs. And so we're going to remove this now. And one of the things I wanted to show you here is that water will seep underneath here. Now wood rot is like cancer. It just spreads throughout. So a telltale sign, of course, this is the north side of the home. And you do have mold that's growing here. Um, I would recommend uh, the homeowners here pressure wash their house often. And uh, there are some chemicals when you can spray on here, just called spray and forget. You spray it on here, it's a fungicide. It will remove all of this uh, mold. Now, remember now, mold is a, is a uh, let's say, let's just call it a plant, all right? and it will grow and expand and its roots will get in through cracks and crevices and that's why it's very very important to remove mold off of your surfaces uh, to the exterior of your home so my suggestion is to have this staircase and, and the deck um, pressure washed uh, treated and then uh, painted uh, throughout so let's go ahead and remove this board here and replace it now, probably one of the best tools I've ever invested in is the cordless Ryobi. Now, Ryobi years ago was not as good as it is now. And, of course, this is cordless, and I absolutely love these. Uh, if you want to know um, the prices and everything on how you can get one, uh, I'll send you a link. Just go ahead and click the link right here and also in the description. So what I'm going to do, instead of uh, trying to pry this up and whatever, I'm going to go ahead and make my cuts off of the center. So I have three points. I have one, two, and then right here behind me, three. And these are three, three um, risers, if you will, or stringers, excuse me, three stringers. So I'm going to cut on either side of the center then that way it's going to be much easier to, to get off. So let me go ahead and cut this. Okay, so I've made my cut all the way through. The uh, handle here is keeping me from making a clean cut. So I've got maybe about, uh, say, a quarter of an inch distance uh, to be cut, but that's no big deal. Now let me just kind of span, uh, scan over here a little bit. I want to show you something. Uh, this, of course, is an 18-volt uh, lithium battery that I'm using. You can see this here. Um, so I use lithium because it'll last longer. The 18 volt, uh, I want to use this same battery on all of my uh, tools, cordless tools. And so 
I didn't want to go with a 20 because 20 uh, will probably torque my wrist on a on a drill or a screwdriver cordless uh, screwdriver so I just chose 18 volts now the difference here the, the only thing that you got to really w watch out on is that when you start your cut and I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit closer for you so I'm gonna reduce the noise in this video because it'll be too loud but one of the things I, I've learned in a cordless unless it's just a, a gigantic <laughs> one that's got a lot more uh, horsepower on it if you will it's just just to start out slow and let the blade let the blade work with you and for you so instead of trying to push through uh, and force it uh, will cause it to stop I don't want that to happen so I'm just not going to um, bother with torquing the motor on my cordless so let's go ahead and proceed Now, it just stopped, so that's a safety on it where it doesn't burn the motor up. So I just have to make sure that I'm keeping uh, everything straight and not turning it left or right. Try to keep it as straight as I can. Okay, so that's about as far as I can go there. Uh, one thing that you will notice when cutting through thicker wood on the Ryobi cordless is that you have um, a lot of power that's drained from your battery. So you really got to be careful of that. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, bust this up and remove it now. Okay, so for removal, I'm going to use a claw hammer. Okay, this is a 16 ounce and um, I really do like this hammer. It's probably one of the first hammers I've ever bought and um, I just like to get the job done. This does have a fiberglass uh, handle to it and then the next tool is what I um, call a um, a shorty, shorty. <laughs> it's actually a crowbar and it's a pry bar uh, so I use it for different uh, different ways. I'm just going to kind of show you a little bit here. Make sure I can get this into the to the camera screen. Okay, so what I'll do is simply take my pry bar, take it underneath, drive it in, and then just pry straight up on it. And the end there now. I'm going to have to do some repairs, I can tell already, on this because it is uh, broken badly on this side. So let me give it a little, um, a little whack. And that took care of that. This needs some encouragement. Now, you can use the, the crook end of your pry bar, drive it in, get some leverage like so. All right, so now pretty much the whole board's come up all the way across, so that's uh, that's assuring. And then on the other side, I can do the same thing. Use the short end of it. Yeah, you can tell how deteriorated this has become try something a little bit different. Just go ahead and pry up the whole thing. See if I can encourage it that way without doing any damage to the existing step. There we go. Just need a little encouragement. Now, the cool thing about this is this end right here has got a place where you can pry the nails up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here by driving in the pry bar and just pulling this up. So this is pretty much uh, rotted through and through. And it's a good thing that we came along and replaced this when we did 
this was a huge uh, factor. Uh, it's completely rotted, or rotted through. So uh, we may have to look at all of these treads to see if they're any good. Um, it's a huge safety issue here. All right. Well, I'll talk to the owner about what we want to do. Here's good on the ends, and you can tell about eight to ten inches up. It's uh, rotted. Backside looks okay. So let me go ahead and pull this off here, and just well, we'll see. Now, um, now the number one rule when you're doing any remodeling, uh, removing wood with nails or screws, you either want to back those out, and what I do is just take my, the flat end of my hammer, the widest part. It doesn't mean that you have to remove the whole nail if you don't want to. So just take it get it flush, but I like to go ahead and pull this all the way out. One quick way to do this is do it sideways. Make sure that you're not throwing out the nails and screws out to the yard. Uh, it's a huge um, hazard for when the lawn people come out or you do the lawn or whatever. You don't want these to be projectiles for in yourself or anybody else around. So now I'm going to go ahead, go back up here and remove these nails. Several ways to do it. Again, use the hammer, I mean the claw. You're going to use the claw to the hammer. Take it and do it sideways. Bend it sideways. Or you can rock it sometimes. It'll come straight out. Okay, I'm going to save that nail. Now I've got two nails that are coming in from the uh, spindles right here. These are um, two by four spindles. I'm going to go ahead and back those out. Sometimes you need a little help going through. So I will bend that up a little bit just to where I can get my hammer to it. I think what I'll do is on the back side of this, go ahead and pull this nail out here. Just going to hook on it. And I can't show you what I'm doing, so I'm going to go ahead and back it out this way. We're going to clean off the treads, uh, the top part uh, where the tread sits. That way it's there. Uh, a couple of things that are questionable is this right here. If you can see this uh, section is completely gone, completely rotted out. So I 
think I'm going to have a talk with the owner here and see what we need to do. Okay, so after talking with the owner, uh, we decided to do a temporary fix because uh, later on, about three or four months from now, we're going to tear this entire deck down or the staircase down and then build a kind of a mezzanine type of a deck a little bit higher, probably about this high right here, further on out. Uh, let me swing this around and kind of show you what, why we're doing this. So as you can tell here, uh, the side of the house goes down. So what they're going to do is go ahead and put a deck probably out to right about here, which is about 10, 10 feet out uh, from where I'm standing right here. Okay, so with that being said, what I'm going to do now is where the sides over here are missing to the stringer, I'm going to marry a board, uh, just a 2 by uh, this is a 2 by 6 I'm going to marry a 2 by 6 into this, but it will not fit straight on him because it's square and this is diagonally coming down at an angle. So I'm going to have to measure an angle, if you will. So I'm going to have to measure an angle, if you will, and then go directly uh, onto the same angle that it's going on where, the, where each of them fl are flush. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, so I have the angle coming down right here, and um, this is a square edge, so even if I was to marry these boards together, uh, they would uh, fall off like that one just did, and it wouldn't be a good fix. So I do have some nails sticking out, I'm going to back those out. But what I want to do is take the same angle that uh, this board is on. So an easy way to do that is just push it up to the bottom of the tread, like so, and flush here. What I'm going to do is take my pencil, all right, and run at the bottom to get that angle. And I don't need to get the whole angle because I can pretty much see where I'm at just if I can get about an inch or two. And so I can go off of this angle right here, just go ahead and cut it up, and um, it will fit there. Now I'm going to find out how far back this goes by measuring to see how far back that goes there to the top of that tread and that's about uh, from the angle I'm going to use eight and a half inches. So I'm going to use um, eight and a half inches from this point here to the front. So let me see if that's long enough. And that'll be good because I'm at um, eight inches there. So that's fine. So all I'm wanting to do is marry these uh, these boards to the existing uh, right. I'm sorry, um, stringer. And I'm, so I'm going to do one, two, and then three at the top. So this will help me feel more secure, uh, and and knowing that um, I don't cause a liability. Um, for the people here, even though they've made the decision not to replace the stringer uh, for right now, and we've talked about you know using keeping the keeping the staircase uh, for a fire escape. So let's proceed on. Okay, so what I've done here is gone ahead and just made a cut to marry this uh, two by ten onto this section here. So, um, level it off here, get as flush as I can up front, go ahead and use what I call, these are uh, deck screws with Canadian head, and uh, I've got a, an extension here, and it's got a sleeve to it, so I can just put it straight on in, don't have to worry about using two hands at all, and then that's safe. So I'm going to go ahead and secure this as best as I can. Okay, might drive one more in there, you never know, just for, for better luck. Okay, 
Now that is as solid as it's going to get, so I feel much better now about putting the tread up on here. Let's go to the other side. Now what I'm going to do is just go ahead, because I'm doing this one-handed, so to speak, I'm going to push it up the, the portion here, all the way up to the bottom side, make it flush here in the front. Go ahead and secure a screw, and then just put some more screws in there as needed. You don't want to make your screws all in one line and because it'll split the wood because it'll split the wood so kind of disperse the screw as much as possible and the angles all right so there's one i've got one more below here then one more top now that's got a nail in it so i'm just going to go ahead and use that nail to secure the board like so so everything's flush there again I'm going to go ahead and secure everything with the screws these are again deck screws that I'm using Okay, so that's final there. Got one more at the top. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the position of laying wood down, especially when you're walking for walking surfaces. You always want the crown up, and the way I say crown, see how it's crowning, it's curving like so. This, if you were to do it the opposite, I'm going to flip this board over. If you were to do it the opposite, uh, eventually the ends will, will curve up and buckle. So that's why you do this. You always put with the tread in down, or I'm sorry, the crown down. So we're going to go ahead. I've already pre-measured this, and this is pretty much just getting this screwed in, secured, and ready to go. Now, I'm going to use three uh, screws per, and so again, I just use the extension drop it in so you can use this and I really do like this this is a Ryobi as well and then that way I don't have to uh, hold on and try to figure out my alignment it automatically does it for me one thing that I do like about the the, the deck uh, screw as you can see this here um, it's got kind of like a self starter if you will so it's it it drills into the wood uh, gradually and doesn't split it uh, it's not as prone to splitting so I'm gonna go ahead and start my alignment as needed and the best thing to do is to take these and screw them in in a way that they automatically go snug into the into the wood. You don't want them sticking up. At all. So you want them to get them flush. I'll give you a screenshot here in just a second. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and drive these nails in now I 
not going to be able to get right here so I'm going to have to use the tread that I put in for right now and when you drive it in you can see let me do a tight shot on this one as you can tell here I've driven it all below or, or below or at the surface so that's the best practice if you will so I want to go ahead and secure these in I've got an area here in the back that I can secure this to that's not below it's sticking up it's a little bit higher right here so I'm gonna go ahead and try it again there we go completely missed the wood so I'm gonna to have to back it out now to back it out what I'm gonna do is go behind the board get the end of the screw pull up because it's got a section on here that won't allow me to get to it so I might have to go underneath find out where I missed it there we go Okay, so that didn't work. So what I'm going to do is use the end of my pry bar. You can see right here, it's got the part where you put, try to capture the head. So I'm going to turn it and lift at the same time. There we go. Now the reason that happened I couldn't back it out because the treads, the thread, excuse me, on the screw do not go all the way up. So there's a little portion there that's missing. All right, so let's drive this back in and use a different angle. All right, so I feel really good about this now. Okay, so now that we've completed the job, we've done some repairs, we've replaced the tread right here and then added some additional supports all the way up as needed. So the rule in uh, home repair, especially DIY, you have three rules. One is safety. Make sure that your home, the surrounding area is safe. You don't want anybody to get hurt. You don't want to hurt yourself your family members or even visitors to your home uh, for liability purposes. Uh, huge risk there if they could prove you know that you were negligent or something was not done properly it's a huge uh, liability issue that could arise in court so uh, very expensive. Alright so the second thing besides safety is function. Alright so does you know the things the parts of your home function as they should as you need them to all right and then third is aesthetics how does it look all right so if you can get all three of those to line up that's a beautiful project a beautiful day for you so again this is rick patterson with the handyman toolbox thanks so much for coming to uh, my video and if you like this i hope you do Please leave a comment, give me a like, and please subscribe. Love to include you in the DIY home improvement enthusiast community. That's a mouthful, word, a mouthful isn't it? Uh, into our Facebook as well. Just simply look up DIY home improvement enthusiast group on Facebook. You'll see us there, and it simply has our logo, and uh, it's by the Handyman Toolbox. All right, we'll see you next time.